Coming up, we'll catch up with a sheriff's deputy who lost his leg nearly five months after being shot. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Tomorrow marks five months since an ambush style shooting claimed the lives of three officers, a canine officer, and injured others in the Allen community of Floyd County. Floyd County Deputy Darren Lawson was shot in the leg that night. We last talked to him about a month after the shooting, right after his eighth surgery. Now Emily Bennett is sitting down with him at his home after his last surgery, making the decision to amputate his leg. A never ending cycle of surgeries, countless nights in the hospital with no end in sight. We couldn't get a definite answer of the time frame and, and if I'm actually going to be functionable enough to you know either go back to work or do anything like that. For four and a half months, Deputy Darren Lawson's been fighting to keep his leg after being shot in an ambush style shooting in Allen, Kentucky on June 30th. I was missing, I think, four and a half to five centimeters of bone. Foot was gone. There was nothing left. You know, the only thing that I had that was mine, I had about a strip of meat about this big that connected right here to my ankle. That's all I had left. After 11 surgeries, Lawson made the choice to amputate his leg below his knee. If it would have been up here, I would have done it. I would I would have tried to save it. What was that decision like for you, though? Because that's not an easy decision. Uh, honestly, it's a lot easier than you expect. Uh, because, you know, I want <clears throat> a better quality life. Lawson says his decision was inspired by others, including an Army veteran who continued to live life to the fullest after amputation. He's hiking mountains. He's going to Colorado and doing all these things and running marathons. And you're just like, OK, well, if he can do it, then why can I do it? So doctors hope to keep fighting to save his leg. But Lawson says missing big moments in his three year old daughter's life made the choice easy. Actually, Mr. Birthday to where I couldn't, you know, they were, they, we had a bunch of inflatables and stuff brought and put up out back and there, I, I couldn't even go outside. So, so that day pretty much sealed the deal that it was coming off. Along with the physical pain, the emotions from that night have taken a toll on Lawson. He says he spent months bottling everything up. You can't ignore it. Don't let, <clears throat> because if you do, it'll gut you. And I ignored it for, for a long time. And until about seven weeks ago, when he started therapy, now seeing a big change in himself. Yeah, I'm not as, I guess, angry as you could say. Yeah, you know, I'm angry now. I'm angry talking to you while I'm sitting here. It's just, and uh, that he's been able to help it a lot to calm me down. I guess you could say. Lawson also relies on his brothers in blue, who were on scene of the tragedy, getting through each day together. Every one of them has, I guess, listened to, you know, what I had to say, and you know, they're, you know, they're always going to be there, and especially the boys that, you know, Dusty and Chris, who who was actually on scene that day when when it first started, but being able to talk to them and and knowing that they're still here, you know, it has been uh, it's been a peace of mind. And as he moves forward, he faces new challenges like phantom limb pain. Right now I'm sitting here and my toes are hurting, but they're not there. <laughs> it's really odd. When that starts, I'll look at it and like trying to teach. Tell hey, listen, right. yeah, there. th 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 there's no way that hurts there, <laughs> you know. And in a few months, he'll learn to walk again on a prosthetic. Okay, I can't wait. I think about it every day. Uh, just being able to walk to the bathroom normal or or do anything normal, <clears throat> you know, walk through the kitchen normal, walk, you know, just just anything. I can't wait to drive. I haven't drove since June 30th. So is this kind of a moment where it's like the biggest moment of hope for you since since that day? Uh, Being able to kind of move forward now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100 uh, percent. No question. Um, my mindset is a lot better than it was <clears throat> when it was on. Hoping to be walking again by spring. As soon as they give me the green light, then I can that I can, you know, walk and, and and walk like on a you know up an incline or anything like that. I'm going I'm going hiking. Already planning a trip with the boys. Me and uh, some buddies are 
we're going to pack up and, uh, and we're going to hit the Appalachian Trail for a few days. How do you move on from something like this? How does the community move on from something like this? You don't. And you can't. Uh, the only thing you can do is, uh, you know, think about them. Uh, make sure, you know, them boys are, are, are honored and, and never forgotten. Because um, stuff like this is never going to go away. You know, that scar on Floyd County is always going to be there. The scar on me is always going to be here. It's never going to go away. You just got to, you got to do what they would want you to do, which is to move on the best we can, get by the best we can. You know, so, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm sure most of Floyd County is going to do the same. So. There's Emily Bennett reporting after his stitches are out in about a week, they'll start the process of fitting him for prosthetic. Lawson says his goal is still to one day go back to work at the Floyd County Sheriff's Office, but that would not be until he feels comfortable using the prosthetic and is able to run again. Weather wise out there tonight, still watching a cold front moving into the region as we watch some showers also push into the area. Here's a look outside from three of our cameras. London Corbin Airport right now, 56, 54 in Hazard and 57 in Pikeville. It's breezy winds out of the south between f uh, 10 and 15 miles per hour. And we are seeing some of those showers there. You see the sheen on our parking lot where we've seen some showers here in Hazard. Still low 60s in Prestonsburg, mid 50s elsewhere. As we continue to watch showers push on through the region, another batch of moderate to heavy rain beginning to push into portions of of the Cumberland Valley, and that's where the heaviest of the rain looks to be. Western third of the area and a level one marginal risk for severe weather. The greatest risk of severe weather still across the deep south, where tornado warnings are still in progress across Mississippi and Alabama. But further to the north, we watch the cold front start to try to take shape as it heads toward the Wabash Valley. For us tonight, mid 50s with showers and storms off and on. Really a great sleeping night out there with the pitter patter of the rain on the window. Latest on when we could see a return to some cooler air in a few minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. The Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky is hoping to hear from the community about their flood recovery needs. Tonight they held a flood recovery meeting in Breathitt County. It's the second of four scheduled in the hardest hit counties. WYMT's Keaton Hall was there. Nearly four months after President Joe Biden visited Marie Roberts Caney Elementary School in Breathitt County, there's still a need for flood recovery in the area. The needs are uh, tremendous. Uh, there have been some individuals that, you know, that are back in their homes, that are uh, back to somewhat normal lives, but um, there are still a lot of great needs out there. The Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky hosted a flood recovery meeting at the school on Tuesday, hoping to hear from flood victims about what they still need. Areas perhaps that uh, FEMA hasn't touched or Red Cross or uh, other agencies have not fulfilled and perhaps the foundation can utilize that and determine uh, how some of the uh, funding can be distributed. Marie Roberts Caney Principal Jason Fugit says many of his students' families came to the meeting looking for answers. We had uh, 86 kids here that had lost everything. Um, 50 something of them, their whole home was gone. Um, the other ones, the home was salvageable, but um, they lost everything in it. Folks who came out were given a free meal, a gift card, and offered mental health services from Kentucky River Community Care. Having this here tonight was really a nice thing to let people remember that, you know, hey, we're, we're not forgot about, and uh, letting the family say, hey, you know, people are still out there trying to help us. The foundation plans to have two more flood recovery meetings in December, one in Knott County and one in Perry. There are resources that other communities don't know, so we're going to compile all the data and uh, send that back out to the individuals that attended. The foundation says more than 200 people RSVP'd for this meeting. In Breathitt County, Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. The next meeting is December 3rd in Knott County at Emelina Elementary School. You need to register before the event. Leadership from the Kentucky Hospital Association visited Pikeville today. Talking to Kentucky is a listening tour the KHA is conducting. These events are taking place across the Commonwealth for leaders to hear issues directly from hospitals and communities. The panel discussed growth in the region while the KHA team shared health care policies. Today's event was hosted by Pikeville Medical Center and Appalachian Regional Health Care. 
Today is Governor Andy Beshear's 45th birthday, and his campaign is using the occasion to raise more money for his reelection bid. The solicitation letter suggests a $45 donation. The most recent reports show Bashir's campaign war chest is approaching $5 million. Bashir won a narrow victory in 2019 when he defeated incumbent Governor Matt Bevin. Now his campaign is keeping a close eye on the very crowded Republican field of candidates, which has just continued to grow. The filing deadline is in early January. The Senate has passed landmark bipartisan legislation to protect same-sex marriages. The bill would ensure that same-sex and interracial marriages are enshrined in federal law. Kentucky Senators Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul voted against the measure. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, it appears Sayersville will have a new mayor after a fight in court. Plus, here come the showers. The latest on when wet weather moves in. Coming up after this. When treating a two millimeter lesion, every pixel of what I 